Welcome into your PFF Draft Review, powered by PFF Edge and Elite. It's all about the Houston Texans today, Sam, who did not have a pick until the third round. Their first round pick went to last year's trade to go get Deshaun Watson. Fair enough. You didn't love what they did with their second round pick, though? Well, no, it made sense, but their second round pick went to getting Brock Osweiler the hell away from this roster. I mean, maybe a move that needed to be made. Yes, don't get me wrong. That's a, a fine way of spending a second round pick. He was that bad, but it's still kind of, it's unique. It is unique. So they didn't have a pick until number 68 overall in the third round. This was one of those drafts where it felt like they really needed to attack the offensive line, but you also don't want to force offensive line picks just because you have these major holes. They did grab a tackle. We'll talk about him in a second. But their first pick was Justin Reed out of Stanford, a guy that was getting a lot of first-round hype as this very athletic safety that could kind of do it all on the back end. So it might be a really good pick for them. We liked this at 68 overall. Yeah, an impressive grade last season, 80.4. The question for me is, those Stanford defensive backs have been playing really well in the Pac-12, but in recent history, they have not transitioned well to the NFL level. You've got guys like Jordan Richards, who the Patriots drafted a couple of years ago, Alex Carter. They've had defensive backs, both at safety and corner, almost universally struggle to make this transition. Is Justin Reed going to be the guy to buck that trend? Yes, yeah, so what I do like about Reed, though, is when he does play that you know too high type of role and works downhill and uh, does traditional safety things, you can see that that uh, athleticism, that special change of a change of direction, and uh, really his acceleration was spectacular as well. He had a challenging role though in that Stanford defense, covering slot receivers quite a bit. That's why that 80.4 grade was probably a little bit lower than you'd expect. Uh, had to cover a lot of shifty slot receivers, which isn't really his skill set. So I do think when he's playing more of a traditional safety role at the next level, he'll be pretty good, graded a little bit better in 2016 as well. Uh, then we get to Martinez Rankin. That's their first offensive lineman off the board. Third round, 80th overall. Another guy at one point in life was getting first round hype like another 150 prospects were, but uh, never really showed it on the field at Mississippi State. Had a horrible grade in 2016 and then improved to 77.1. There's a lot of these guys in that third round range at tackle, even though he might be playing guard or center, but there's a lot of these guys that are just developmental prospects and Rankin is just that at this point in his career. Yeah, the Houston Texans last season had the worst offensive line in the National Football League. They allowed 250-plus total pressures, way more than any other team. They have added bodies to try and fix that, but just reading his scouting report in the PFF Draft Guide, which you guys can get and follow along with right now, if you have PFF Edge or Elite, comes with both of those Slow feet that struggle mirroring any sort of quickness, allowed 18 pressures and 247 pass blocking snaps, allowed two sacks, a hit, and three hurries in a dreadful performance against Mississippi this season. This is a guy that sounds like he would have been perfectly at home on last season's Houston offensive line. Ouch. So we got some developing to do yeah. with Rankin, but he did take a big step forward last year because he created only about 47 in 2016. Uh, second, their third third round pick actually, Jordan Aikens out of UCF, really like his ability as this mismatched tight end type of player. He's one of those, you know, H-back move tight ends, was third in the draft class in yards per route, and I really liked his route running skills. So when you talk about building some weapons around Deshaun Watson, it's been DeAndre Hopkins and then not much beyond no. that. Aikens has a chance to see some targets right away. I think that's a big thing, is trying to surround Deshaun Watson with as many weapons as humanly possible, especially if this offensive line is still going to be a work in progress. And at the very minimum, it seems like it's going to be that. They're trying to add bodies to move it in the right direction. But even Texans fans who talk to you about it, they're saying it's, it's going to be an incremental thing. We're trying to move this offensive line better step by step. We saw last year Deshaun Watson can make an offensive line look dramatically better than it was. He was able to produce incredible numbers despite that terrible pass protection, and things only really fell apart when he got injured and they were forced to put Tom Savage back in the lineup. So actually, I don't mind this idea of instead of focusing on the big bodies up front, let's give him the weaponry to make that part of the job even easier. And a lot of times it's just get guys that can get open quickly, and that is the best way to protect the line. If they can get open, boom, right off the bat. And their fourth round pick has that ability, Kiki QT out of Texas Tech. And he's kind of your more vertical slot receiver. And I got to pull up my favorite number in all of draft season. QT went deep better than anybody in this class as far as efficiency goes. He was eighth in the nation with 542 yards on deep passes. 
but only ranked 114th in deep targets. Only had 18 targets to get those 542 deep passes. That is incredible. He's kind of, he's not a gimmick player, but he can do the gimmicky type stuff as far as his quickness and speed goes. But he's very good at getting open down the field as a vertical slot player. And that's where Deshaun Watson can make a lot of his throws up the seam. It's a really good fit for this scheme. Yeah, he's an explosive slot player, which I think is big in this offense that has to live on those high, uh, those big plays, those uh, low percentage, uh, high impact plays. We've already got Will Fuller there. We've got DeAndre Hopkins that can make any catch you want. Now you add a vertical slot weapon and a guy that can get open from tight end. Suddenly this offense has got an awful lot more weaponry for Deshaun Watson to, to play with. Another pick we like quite a bit, Duke Agia for sec sixth round pick, 177th overall. Just really good value for a guy that graded at 85.7 last year. And if you just look at his three-year production, it was just solid across the board. There's a reason why he wasn't a top-round pick, but we did have him uh, more of as a, as a third-round type of player. 82 overall grade in 2015, 82.1 in 2016, and then the 85.7 last year. And he's one of those guys that isn't the most you know, explosive player, not the best as far as change of direction goes, just knows how to use his hands well, plays the run extremely well. And when you talk about a sixth-round pick, you can actually get some production out of him and you know, that's a big win for the Texans. Yeah, we're always big fans of guys that have been consistently productive in college, even if they're not the best athletes in the world, because it shows a kind of technique level to get, get the job done, despite not being the best athlete on the field and just relying on that. And in the NFL level now, with practice time more limited than it's ever been, simply understanding how to do your job and how to beat the guy in front of you with technique and with, um, with fundamentals is huge. Plus, we're talking about a guy that has one of the most badass mouthpieces you're ever going to see. Those, is that how you evaluate your players? Those fangs right there, that's worth an extra first. That's worth an extra round, right? So get them bumped up. So it's even more of a steal to get a GO4 in that sixth round. The, the Texans then rounded out the draft with a few other depth players. But I'm just a big fan of what they did in the middle rounds. And given the limitations, no first rounder, no second rounder, uh, not a bad draft for the Texans. Uh, we'll have to get a few more impact players next year at the top of the draft, but I like the depth that they added this season. Your Houston Texans NFL Draft Review, powered by PFF Edge and Elite.